Hey YouTube, Southwest Urban Homestead with a Me Rabbit update. You might remember from my last video the three kits that I had in the one cage. Well, back when I weaned these kits, I made a mistake. I was leaving the females in in mom's cage, and the males I was separating and putting in another cage. Now, at some point, I either mixed up one, or I didn't properly sex one. Now, young rabbits are notoriously difficult to sex, but whatever happened, I made a mistake somewhere, and now I'm going to show you guys. And it's a wonderful learning opportunity. So I figured you guys can learn from one of my mistakes, and even I learned some stuff that I didn't really know too much about. So somehow, by accident, I ended up with a female in the male cage. Accidents happen, and I found out the other morning when I came into the rabbitry and I saw kits on the wire in this cage. I had separated everyone the night before because the mama there was pulling the fur out of everybody. I just assumed at the time that he was a male and they were fighting for dominance in the cage, which normally happens. I don't typically leave my kits in cages this long together. I typically slaughter before this, but this time with the move, um, I had let them go to quite a bit of an older age than I usually let them get. But I came in and there were these four kits on the wire. So I scooped them up, put them in the nest box, made a nice little nest for them. I don't have a whole lot in there because it's, it's super hot today. It's 84 degrees inside the rabbitry right now, even with the AC going. So they, they don't need a whole lot of insulation. Too much heat is just as bad as too much cold for them. And one of the things I, wanted, I really want to tell you guys here is this is a, a good example of why we don't breed them so young. Yes, they are able to breed. I mean, this is a clear example right here. She's just barely five months old and she had a litter. However, it's an extremely small litter size and her reproductive processes had probably been damaged. She may have only small litters the rest of her life. I'm not keeping her as a breeder anyways, and I had no plans to, but it's just something to think about. You know, she's so young, and, and a lot of the, the instinct comes with the age, too. You see a lot of the young ones, they'll, they'll drop the kits on the wire like she did, but then when you move them into the nest box, they won't even nurse them, you know. I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys about breeding rabbits, inbreeding, line breeding, and outcrossing. Because there's not a whole lot of information out there, especially on YouTube, when it comes to these subjects. So inbreeding is the breeding of two individuals that are closely rela related genetically. For example, um, mother-son, father-daughter, brother-sister, that sort of thing. That's inbreeding. Inbreeding can increase the chances of offspring being affected by recessive traits and um, undesirable traits. Inbreeding is used in what is called selective breeding, and it's a technique used when trying to establish a desirable trait, such as be it color, meatiness, or personality traits. Um, it's, it's extensive, inbreeding is extensively used when creating a breed. For example, if one wanted to create a breed with specific, uh, with specific color, one might choose a buck that has produced consistently colored offspring and then breed him to his descendants. For example, breed him to his daughter, then his granddaughter, and so forth, so long as they show the desired trait. And they do this in order to maximize the percentage of his genes in the offspring. However, any recessive or undesirable traits, such as genetic diseases, will also be maximized. So with inbreeding, care has to be taken not to use unfit specimens. Now, line breeding is a form of inbreeding, and there's really no distinction between the two terms. But line breeding uses crosses between individuals and their descendants, or cousins. It's, it's used to increase a particular animal's genes within the population. An example of line breeding would be to take the granddaughter and breed it back to the grandsire. It's less likely to cause problems in the first generation that you could get with inbreeding, but over time it will reduce the genetic diversity of your herd and it will increase problems that come with too small of a gene pool. Now, outcrossing is when two unrelated individuals are bred. In the case of most uncommon breed rabbits, you may find that all the animals are related to a common ancestor. However, in a, in a well-established and commonly bred breed, such as the New Zealand Whites or the Californians, there generally is a large enough gene pool that the likelihood of a true outcross can exist. So don't be too concerned about making sh absolutely sure that your animals are completely unrelated. There's nothing wrong with inbreeding and line breeding. It can actually, in fact, reveal to you the genetic material that you have in your herd. As long as you're responsible and only keep the best examples of the animals that you want to keep and produce, and generously cull anything that presents traits that, you, that are undesirable in your herd, there is no problem with inbreeding or line breeding. 
Alright, thanks for watching guys, that's all I have for this one. Uh, remember to like and subscribe, comment if you want, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Hopefully it didn't put you to sleep like this gal back here. Have a good one.